Hi, so someone's nicked the spare, didn't they, right? So I've just been using this trusty little entrenching tool. Um, so the pit is dug. Um, so this is going to be a, a variation of the Dakota fire roll, and it ro works a little bit like um, a rocket stove. Uh, we'll have to get some mesh. So, so one area will be they call it the fire box, and then just to start off, we'll uh, raise that up a little bit like that, and then uh, cover this section up like a tunnel, uh, and. Uh, it sucks air in and feeds it to the bottom of the fire so if i dig a little trench here then that's where you can feed the wood in um, and then it's just a case of we've got um, a little pulley system to lower and higher the cauldron for when we're cooking so this this will uh, do for today uh, once it's built up uh, and then we'll just uh, build on that so we can have multiple uh, pans going uh, and we'll expand the, the worktops for um, forage, local food prep and stuff like that so I'm just going to crack on. Alright so we're getting there, we've got a little uh, cap there so the rain don't get in. Then, uh, just maybe have to peg a sheet over it so water don't get in and then this is where we'll feed the wood uh, so we'll have to process kindling uh, and then these little rocks they just serve to lift the wood off the floor so the air can get sucked underneath uh, so it's like a double whammy um, and then you can block off this hole um, we'll just have to do some tests now uh, but, so I'm going to block off there for, as well to stop the air coming through this one but this is our firebox this is where we're going to load the stuff and then we've got two holes to make the, the air variable and then so we've just got to make a tripod over here but we'll get a little fire going in there and see how it works and then it's uh, cooking time might have a little whiskey now though. Alright, so it's working. This is our Dakota fire pit, grilling pit. And then we've just cleared up this area, uh, the ash, so that doesn't draw your eye anymore. And uh, we'll get some things growing in this area now. I'll make a little sign to say that this seeds. I already put seeds in there. Uh, we've started taking around the, the edges, the cover crop. Uh, but, uh, that's something that we can do next time, so I'll have to get some a little stencil set. Uh, so, uh, next job, make the tripod. A bit of wrapping and frapping. Look at that. It's roaring. So these are our two poles. I'm just making the third pole for the tripod. Just film a bit while we're doing the, the tripod. Yep. So Clovich is a quick way to do it is you make a loop that way, a loop the opposite way, put them together and just feed it over and then just cinch that down. Um, and then so it's is it four that? Uh, and then uh, I think it's two or three fraps. So fraps is just uh, you feed it around there. As well, usually uh, you'd pull it a bit tighter than that, but I think it'll suffice for our purposes. Uh, you can use a toggle. And uh, that just means wrap a little bit of a stick around it and you can use that as a bit more leverage to cinch it up. Yeah. That'll do. You could, um, if you wanted to, do it on each of the wraps. Oh, so, yeah. So the important bit on this now is you don't cross it diagonal. Uh, 
so to serve you doing that you come round either the front and down there or the back so, so it's not doing an X pattern there just uh, makes it a bit more stable uh, and then your fraps on this side and the third one give it a go give that a go pull there we go and then you tie it off just at the opposite end and again don't um, don't make a diagonal uh, Tie it off. You can do a clove inch on. Um, or just any way that you you know how to tie it off. Same with the, the first. So one of them's called the North Pole. <laughs> it's that long since I've done it, I don't know which one that is. That one. Well, well. Right, that's our tripod. So now we can use this. We've got a rope here. So this is our cauldron of our foraged distort. Ah, that's it. That. And uh, this is just a little catch puller, well, uh, just a temporary one, but um, basically, if you put weight on that, it catches it. So. Just a quick flip that there. Don't need to screw it in, we're not, we're not climbing on it. Just make sure that the tail end don't go in the fire. It's a good piece of rope, that. And then, there we go. We can lower this up and down freely uh, to adjust the heat. All you do to lower it down is Feed it up like that. Oh, there's a tail in there. There we go, pull this in. And I'll stop there. So, let's get something going. Curry! <laughs> curry it, buds! Get it, curry on. <laughs> right, so what we're making today is a, ver a variation of uh, Sagalo. If I'm saying it right, the Indian dish with spinach, apart from we're using a bistort, a sweet dock that we collected to make dock pudding. And we've got a, a fair bit left over, but I just dried it because I was unsure what I was going to do. So here we go. This is our process. The things we have to process up. We've got a turmeric, a cumin, a bit of paprika, mustard seeds, garlic. Uh, these are just uh, some dandelion seeds that I'm going to spread about the area, Not we're not eating them. Sweet potatoes, onions, and uh, just going to get them processed up, chopped up, and uh, whack them in there. So onions and spices first, um, and then uh, it, there is a lot of natural springs about here, but for today, uh, we would have had to go to the water, uh, go to the stream, filter it. So we need to make make a filter. That's the closest one, but we can collect natural spring water as well. So the pan's here to make um, spruce tip tea, and I've brought my uh, nice, pretty little uh, kettle there. Look at that! I'm pretty impressed with that. Uh, so I'm going to process this up, and I'll uh, cut to it frying away in pan, I suppose. We're just waiting for the uh, potatoes to finish boiling. Looks like there's some spruce tips. Oh yeah, there was some beeswax in in the, the little cauldron. So we're going to have a bit of beeswax in our curry as well. Uh, this is our colander. We didn't bring a colander out, right? so there's a little bucket here that we'll have to clean out and it's got holes in. So that's how we're going to fill up the potatoes. Uh, so I'm just uh, improvising here. Yeah, and there. Rehydrate all the the bistort in the pan. And there's some in the bottom. So uh, we'll just get it hung up. 
over there and uh, it smells good anyway right so I've just been uh, <coughs> chatting to some treasure hunters but here we go sweet dockaloo uh, so we're going to plate this up uh, I ain't got much battery left uh, get some scran I'm starving now uh, but I'll just show you how the the mechanism works here just lift it up like that and uh, it lifts it up just get that out of the way and uh, get the glove and uh, right, chow down right so mission accomplished sweet dockaloo made with uh, bistort uh, what, what they make dot puddings with and it's ground mm. so good Mm. Right. In a bit. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace! So Carl's just saying, um, oh, missed it. Oh, I don't know whether you would have picked it up on camera then. The bird is uh, using the bird box. Anyway, at least that one. I said it were a blue tit. Uh, hopefully, it picked it up cam on the camera. Uh, we're just leaving now.